Hello and welcome back to the Private Label Masters YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk exactly what you read about in the title. $10 million on Amazon in the past 12 months. How did I do it? What are some tips? What can help you perhaps scale your future or your current Amazon business to these levels? If you're interested in taking a look into my Amazon Seller Central account on my computer behind me, stay tuned to this video. Now before I jump into the video, I wanna say that this is the last opportunity to be eligible for one free access to the Private Label Masters course. Now, in order to be eligible, you have to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't to this channel and like, comment on this video and the past three videos. And in my next video, I'm gonna pick someone who followed all those rules and announce who that winner is in my next video. So make sure you do that. Go back to the last three videos, watch them in full, hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment below. Okay, so hitting $10 million on Amazon, that's, that's a pretty big feat for myself. I never in a million years ever thought that I would get to this point. I was happy just to learn about selling on Amazon, hoping to get one or two or three products, make maybe you know, a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars a month, and it's grown to this level. Now, a little bit about my history selling. I have been selling uh, private label products, that business model for three years. April 2016 is when my first product hit the Amazon warehouse and I was hooked. And since then I've worked really hard to grow my business, launch more products and scale it to now that I'm doing around a million dollars every 30 days and just hit that $10 million mark for the past rolling 12 months. Let's jump on the computer before we talk a little bit more about this, how I did this and some tips for you guys and some common questions I get asked. Uh, let's jump on the computer and I'll show you those numbers right now. All right, so here we are at Seller Central. Let's jump right into my account. All right, so here we are and we have the last 30 days, $1,102,994.58. Woo, yeah, that's 1.1 million in 30 days. So that's where I'm at now and when you build this kind of credibility with Amazon, notice what Amazon starts offering. They start offering you loans. And I just received an offer to get a loan for $1 million from Amazon. So this is quite the feat for myself. Um, if I go back to December of last year, I was trying to hit this number. And now this is like the new watermark for my account. If we log into, uh, let's see here. Let's look at some other reporting business reports. Here we have today is June 17th. We're at almost $47,000 in sales for the day. Still a few hours left, but let's do a custom year to uh, 12 months back. So let's go 2018. Here we go. And let's hit apply and bam, there we go. 10,481,555 in seven cents. That's 352,735 items ordered and a total of 300,000 total orders. And uh, the average price is $34.13. And you can kind of see uh, what this looks like on the graph. You can see here's Q4 and, and then it's just kind of steadily grown. And you can see by these numbers, $45,000 days, 44. That looked like a large one, a $60,000 day. Um, of course, none compared to this $191,000 day, day that I had uh, last Prime Day. Um, and who knows, this next Prime Day will be a good day too. So there it is, not a six figure, not a seven figure, but an eight figure Amazon seller in the past rolling 12 months. All right, so there we have it. You can see the numbers. I'm hoping, you know, to hit this uh, calendar year of 2019. Last year I did around 8 million. This calendar year, I'm hoping to do between 12 and 14 million. We'll see if that happens. Hey, and who knows, by the end of 2020, hit that $20 million a year mark. What are some common questions that I get when it comes to scaling an Amazon business to this level? Now, I have a student group, as many of you already know. Um, I have a course which I teach others how to sell on Amazon. I have multiple students have already doing six figures a year and some already doing six seven figures in sales on Amazon. So I, I put this question out to my student group. I said, hey, I'm making this YouTube video about scaling to $10 million. There's a milestone that I just hit. What are some questions that you guys have that I could answer that could help you guys uh, kind of figure out like what you guys need to do also to get to that level? 
And so I'm gonna answer a few of these questions. Hopefully they answer some of your questions out there too for all of you who are not my students yet. And if you're interested in becoming one of my students and what it takes, click the link in the description below, watch the video, book a call, fill out the survey. And if you're a qualified applicant, we will be in touch. All right, let's jump into some of these questions right now. All right, so the first question that was asked was, what is the profit breakdown of your 80 plus items? And do I only go after items that make a ton of money? All right, that's a great question. I think this year I actually doubled my ASIN list compared to last year. I have approximately between 80 and 90 items. So the profit breakdown per day, okay? So I, what I did was I took a day last week, just a random day, and I wrote down uh, what the breakdown was like, okay? So I have 56 products that make between zero and $100 profit every single day, all right, 56. And this is, a, again, according to just one day that I picked. This can fluctuate a little bit, but this will give you a good idea. I have 13 products that make between $100 and $200 a day. I had eight products that make between $200 and $400 a day. And I have four products that make between $400 and sometimes up to $900 a day. So that I think that's around 81 items. I'm out of stock on a couple and a couple other really good movers that I'm out of stock on. It's okay, one of the nice things about having a lot of products is if you are out of stock on one or two, you still have a bunch of others that are still making money. So. What I've noticed is how I mentioned that 56 products are that zero to 100. Now, a lot of those products are newer. Like I said, I've doubled my ASIN list over the last year. So I was doing around 40 ASINs or SKUs, and now I have close to 80 plus. At the beginning of the life cycle of a product, um, it, you don't always know exactly what it's going to end up selling in the long haul. I've had many products that, you know, I was estimating maybe I'll make like a thousand, two thousand off them. Uh, per month and they ended up making like four to five and sometimes six thousand dollars just because as I got more reviews as I got better ranking as the listing matured as more and more customers are shopping on Amazon every single year they just become bigger winners okay so what I've noticed is yes I have 56 that are in that zero to 100 range uh, probably you know 15 to 20 of those will eventually get up into that $200 plus range per day all right, and when I mentioned that I have, you know, around 12 products that are 200 to 400 plus, uh, sometimes those fluctuate. Sometimes I'll have, you know, 10 products that'll make 400 plus a day. Sometimes I'll only have two. So it's kind of a good mix, but that'll give you a good idea of, of kind of how my product portfolio is laid out. Now, the other question was, do I only go after products that, you know, make a ton of money? And, and you can see by that breakdown that I don't, all right? I go for uh, products that just sell a few a day. I go after products that sell a ton a day. A lot of what I'm trying to do now is, is find products that really match up with my different brands so I can uh, continually grow those. And, and eventually, if I ever were to go sell one of those brands, there's a lot more um, value when you have built out a larger brand. And also you can start to market off of Amazon, on Shopify, a website like that so you can get off Amazon sales. Whereas if I have just a bunch of random products all over the place, if I try to have an off Amazon site, it'd be looking like Walmart, okay? Like here, there, everything, we offer everything, right? And But I don't wanna do that. I wanna have different brands and those are the ones that can bring the most value when I go to sell them in the future. Now here's the next question. It says, looking back, what are the three core principles that made 10 million possible? This is a good question. There's a, there's a, a lot of things you have to do to, to get to 10 million, but if I were to sum it up in three different things to hit this level, I would say the first one is you need knowledge, all right? You need to consistently be taking in knowledge when it comes to Amazon. Amazon is a moving target, different terms of service changes, different ways to find success slightly change. Overall, the main business fundamentals stay the same, but you need to be aware and continue to take in that knowledge, all right? That is a huge thing. You need to be a student for life when it comes to Amazon and stay ahead uh, of the rest of the competition. I would say uh, when I see a lot of these newer sellers coming in, you know, they get most of the material off of YouTube and, and Facebook groups. But as you stay in Amazon for a while, you start to notice there are different layers to this onion. And, and there's deeper layers where you can find, you know, implementing these different things in your business, you'll find even more success, but you only get to that level if you continue to take in that knowledge. Now, the second thing you, you have to have, and most people don't talk about it, is capital or money. Uh, if I'm doing 10 million, if I'm doing a million dollars in sales per month, uh, think of how many products I have to have paid for that are sitting at Amazon. Think of all the reorders that I have to have done. 
uh, it's crazy. And then imagine ordering, if I'm doing a million dollars in sales right now per month, and then I got to order for Q4, it, it takes a tremendous amount of capital or money. Now, if you don't have a ton of money, that doesn't mean you can't eventually get to this point. Um, you're just gonna, it might be a little slower road, but what I've had to do is I, I got kind of aggressive, right? I, I had to like look for ways to find more funding, different things like that in order to be able to purchase all the products and keep the cash flow rolling, okay? If you're not there at this point, no worries. This could be something that is something in the future where you start really getting aggressive with your, with, with maybe getting a loan or something like that. Um, but having capital, it really makes it really makes this business move. Without it, you're kind of sunk. Okay. So for all of you who are living paycheck to paycheck, stop doing that. Okay. Stop doing that right now. Start putting money in the bank. And if you want to say like, hey, do I want to go buy that? You know, seventy thousand dollar car. Think of how many products that that seventy thousand dollar car or the payment on that could potentially help launch. Okay, so I'm not one who, who rushes out and buys depreciating assets, even though one day eventually I'll, I'll get a nicer car, but that time's not right now. I'm busy scaling this business to the moon while this opportunity is here. Now, now the third thing that I say you have to have besides uh, knowledge and being a student of the game for life and capital to keep those reorders and new products flowing is, I would mix these two together, is consistency and drive. Um, I've talked about this many times, but uh, many times before, and I highly recommend this book. I'm gonna put a link in the description. I hope every single one of my viewers buys this book and starts implementing it. It is called The Slight Edge, and it talks about doing specific actions or, or daily tasks or habits on a consistent basis, all right? And you may not see the results of this consistent effort, all right, in your business of learning, of executing, of you know, implementing different new ideas of, of really working on your business. But as you consistently do these tasks all the time and uh, stay on top of these different habits, eventually you're gonna see the compound interest of those different things, all right? So consistency, not getting lax on your business. I talked about that a little bit in a video before this one where I say Amazon apathy. So many people, once they get started selling, they let off the gas. They don't take you know, care of their business like it needs to, okay? So consistency, and I mentioned drive. I get so many questions about how do you find motivation? Every single person is different in how they find motivation. I have like a, an unending fire that burns within me to just keep pushing, to just keep pushing, to, to, to keep growing and, and I enjoy this. I think that has a lot to do with it is I really enjoy it. That, another, another point, that book that I'm telling you about, Slight Edge, you know, a lot of people do all this hard work to get to this point and they let off the gas, right? You gotta keep doing the things that got you here. And so I have that nonstop drive that keeps me going. And that is what you need to have. So again, knowledge, be a student of the game, a consistent student, right? Capital, you need money to make money, especially in private label. And finally, consistency and drive. Do those consistent things on a daily basis, weekly basis, and, and keep that fire going. Find what is in you that will keep that motor going, keep you passionate about your business, and that's gonna help you continue to grow. All right, the next question is, there's so much going on in Amazon private label business. What are things that you should put time and energy into and things that you shouldn't waste a second on? This is good, it's good. You only have so much mental bandwidth, right? What are you gonna put that towards? So I would say, one of the things do not put your time and energy into is Facebook groups and YouTube, all right? Specifically with Amazon. Yeah, that's, it's interesting, there's a social aspect to it, but a lot of that just gets in the way of your progress. Uh, a lot of times the information that you, you hear on YouTube are from people who don't really sell. A lot of people in Facebook groups, uh, you don't have any idea who they are, if their information's credible at all. And it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. It's entertaining, it's fun, there's a social element to it, but it really wastes a lot of time that you could be focusing on your business, okay? So, so don't waste time on that. Now, another thing that I found for my business that really hasn't had the ROI that I have really hope for and I'm, I'm working on different solutions for it is is social media for my different brands and also uh, building out Shopify sites for my different brands I hear so many people say like I want to diversify I don't want all my eggs in one basket in Amazon so I'm gonna open a Shopify site I would love to meet of all of you who think that way and you open your Shopify site how much in percentage 
compared to Amazon do you get on your Shopify site? I guarantee 99.9% .9 will say less than 2% of their sales come from Shopify, and that's even when you work at it. I have two Shopify sites. I get one that gets quite a few sales from it, but even that, it doesn't even compare to Amazon. So I, I think I worked a year really pushing social media and pushing my Shopify site, trying to get a ton of sales on there, and it, it just didn't have the ROI. And I wish I would have spent all that money squarely more on Amazon and, and getting sales there and launching more products there. And I would be even farther ahead than I am now. So that's another thing I would say don't waste time on at this time. Now, if you don't have any money, if you don't have any capital to keep growing and, and you want to spend some time on growing your social media and trying to get traffic to your Shopify site, go ahead. You know, it's not like you're using a bunch of time, but um, if you have money and you have time, you're like, where do I put it? I would not put it solely on those things at the beginning. Now, now things that I, I say you should continue to spend a ton of time on and that I, I always do is product research, product research, product research, product research. Okay, you wanna be a master at product research and listing optimization. I have listings that have been live over two years and I'm still fine tuning them. I'm still finding different ways that I can split test, uh, that I can change something here and there, that I can optimize it in some other way in order to bring out more sales from it. You're gonna have different listings in your account that if you really took the time to like see how much more you can squeeze out of that piece of fruit, you're gonna get more. So continue to look at your listings and figure out how you can continually optimize them. If another listing comes in and they have a, a, a certain type of image and you're like, man, this image is amazing, try to get that same type of image for your listing. Who cares, right? Even if you're selling well, continue to optimize. And again, product research. I have done so much product research that I have a list of products that I have in the pipeline for when I finally do have more cash flow I can go after, okay? Um, so instead of like, hey, now I wanna launch another product, let me do some product research now. If, if you have time to spare, keep hunting and hunting for products. And even if you don't have money for them, you can put them in Excel spreadsheet on, uh, you can use Amazon's wish list and make a list there. You can put it in Viral Launch or Jungle Scout and keep track of those items. And then when you get cash flow, you can go after them and keep growing your business, hopefully to that $10 million mark. All right, the next question I got was, you have over 80 products now. What gave you the confidence when searching for products that they would sell and the jump into sourcing them? I see so many people, also myself, that always need validation somehow of, is this good to sell? What gave you the confidence to jump in and source successful product after successful product? So I would say your confidence grows over time. It would be nice if, you know, from day one or like, day 70, you're like, oh yeah, I can go after this product that's doing you know $50,000 a month in, in sales. But it doesn't work like that. It's, it's like anything that you're nervous the first time you got in, and then after you did it a few times, next thing you know, uh, you've had some of that um, exposure therapy, you could call it, right? You've been exposed to this type of pressure, this type of nerves, whatever it is, and you've seen it work. So what I did was I started smaller, right i didn't go after these like crazy home run products right at the get-go and over time i realized that the process is the same for a small product or one that's not doing a ton of velocity in sales and one that's doing a crazy amount of sales the process is very similar the, the making of the listing uh launching can be slightly different you have to be a little bit more aggressive but overall it's about the same so over time, it's just gonna be something, uh, a confidence level that you're gonna get as you continue to grow, all right? It's gonna be tough if you, you go from an item that doesn't sell very much to trying to get in one of these ones that's like a, a crazy home run item, because these bigger or higher velocity selling products, they have the whales, they have the, the sharks out there who are trying to go after those ones, and not so much the smaller products, okay? But again, confidence grows in time. Now, another thing that helped me um, to grow confidence in, in launching products over time was I always do this in every single one of my products. I look at worst case scenario. Okay, what is worst case scenario? I'm gonna find the lowest price this product has ever sold for and I'm gonna say, you know what, if I have to sell it even lower than that, would I be okay? It, the, the fact of the matter is, is that 90% chance you're not gonna lose all your money. You may, like, like worst case scenario, lose half of your money, but no product's gonna sell for nothing. Every product will eventually sell, even if you have to wait till Q4 and you sell it uh, when there's uh, a buyer frenzy, okay? So I look at worst case scenario, 
I say, hey, here's the worst case scenario. If I have to sell it for X amount cheaper than the lowest price I've ever seen this thing sold, am I okay with that? Can I stomach that? Can I live another day? And if I say yes to that, then I've already factored in worst case scenario and I'm okay with that. So anything above that is great. That's another thing that's helped me kind of reframe this and, and grow the confidence needed to go after more products and, and feel they're successful. Now, the next question is, what are the things you need to do well to succeed in this business? You gotta stay hungry and you have to love it, all right? I love selling on Amazon. This is my, my favorite thing to do. It doesn't even feel like work. I've talked about that before. It just feels like it's a big video game, but you have to really love it. When, when your passion falls for this, you're not really gonna put the same time and effort energy. Next thing you know, you're, you're not even paying attention to it. And that's when the wheels start falling off. And that's where the whole scaling thing doesn't work anymore. Now, I, I have a student group, like I've mentioned before. And a lot of times, I'm not saying every time, because there's always outliers, but I can see who are the ones who have a very high chance of being successful. These are ones who are very involved in that VIP group ones who I see looking and liking all the posts, ones who are always there for live streams when I put them on, ones who, when I look to see how far they've gone in the course, they've watched all the videos, ones who ask great questions and help others. These are the ones that I notice, like they have this passion, this drive, this really love to, for selling on Amazon, and, and those have the highest likelihood of success in selling. You, you also have to learn how to pivot and problem solve. There are so many weird random barriers and road bumps and speed bumps that come in when you're selling on Amazon uh, and they still happen to me all the time. And the initial reaction for most people is to rip their hair out and to freak out. But you have to get to a point where you're okay with it and you learn how to just problem solve and don't get emotionally invested in it. That's another thing that I've seen that really helps people succeed is people who can see an issue, something comes up, they're not totally in a turmoil over it, they learn how to adjust, pivot, fix, they solve the issue, and, and they're back rolling like nothing. So, so learning how to pivot and loving it and also knowing how to problem solve, those are some things that you have to be able to do in order to succeed on, on this kind of level. Now the next question is, how do you mentally set yourself before entering competitive markets. So as we all know, some markets are gonna be way more competitive than others, and if you have the money, you can go after more competitive markets. Uh, it's not always recommended, right? Because it's gonna be more difficult to break through and be the top dogs. I would say I mentally prepare for this. I would, I would call it one thing. I would say strategic aggressiveness or strategic aggression. I have a plan and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make that plan work. I'm really confident in my product research skills nowadays, so it's not like I'll have a product and I'm like, man, will this work or will it not? I know it'll work, it's just a matter of can I get to the top where the big dogs are, right? And a lot of times that takes very strategic measures and also a lot of aggressiveness and being very aggressive when, in order to catch those guys and to top them. Now the next question is, what are mistakes that we should avoid to consistently grow the business? Um, I'm gonna mention this again, stay hungry. Uh, avoid avoid that Amazon apathy. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's the one before this. And also one mistake is, is people are not willing to take on any type of debt. You know, if you're watching Dave Ramsey, he's like, don't go into debt, all this stuff. Credit cards are from the devil. Uh, I don't believe that. Leveraging other people's money in order to grow your business, if you do it in a very um, safe, smart, intelligent way, it, it actually isn't that much risk. And there's a tremendous amount of reward. So um, if you're saying, you know what, I'm only gonna buy stuff when I have cash in the bank, that's gonna be a mistake that is not really gonna have you help you scale to these kind of levels. I will tell you this for a fact, every single one of the eight figure sellers that I've seen, every single one in a lot of seven figure sellers, um, they all take out loans. They all use credit cards and able to fund the beast and keep it rolling, okay? So wrap your mind around that. Do some research on you know good debt versus bad debt and, and growing a small business by incurring debt, right? It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying I, no disses on Dave Ramsey. He has some great principles too, but that is a mistake that I see many people doing is they're afraid to, to take on some debt in order to scale their business. Now, next question is, what do you do when you see opportunities everywhere, but the prices you're getting from the manufacturers are not enabling you to execute and ramp up as you launch goals and that you set? All right, so this this did come across, you know, when I was starting off earlier, is I'd see these products, I'm like, yeah, I can really start growing my brands or launching more products, but I just can't 
get a supplier to give me a price that's gonna make this work. And to be honest, that's just the name of the game. You know, some markets are, you know, the, the margins are lower and yeah, they look great and maybe there's not a lot of competition, but someone in there is probably selling for a lot lower or, or for whatever reason. And, and for those ones, I just keep moving, right? There is always going to be another product. I always say that. Don't marry a product and realize that if you looked at 20 that you liked and you found and you talked to suppliers and you didn't find the margins, it doesn't mean there there's none there. It just means keep going, all right? Now, the next question, I feel like most people are not ready for how much they're about to spend before they get into this business. Realistically, including advertising, how much should new sellers start with, knowing cost of product will vary to really compete for the first year. So it's tough to say like how, how much you're gonna spend on advertising. Um, you could spend a little bit, you could spend a lot, that's kind of up to you. Right, the main goal is getting to the front page. Uh, PPC will help with that. PPC is a good way to get extra sales. Um, but I wouldn't say any product requires you to be spending hundreds of dollars on PPC. Even my my huge winners, I don't spend you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single day on PPC. So that's not really a, a cost that I can really like forecast for you guys. However, remember, whenever you're spending money on PPC, typically you're getting sales. So it's not like all that money is out the door, right? If you're getting some money back, um, a lot of that you may even break even on that PPC and doesn't cost you a thing. So you can't really get caught up in how much going out the door for PPC. But in regards to like overall, I would say 3,000 to 6,000 has always been a decent price range to get started. Um, I've seen people do it on less. I have ones in my course who've done it on less. Um, of course, you can't go after items that are selling $8,000 a month if you only got $3,000 in the bank or $6,000. You have to go for products that fit your budget. And there's always a, a cheaper product that could fit your budget. Um, but again, you're only gonna make real big money is when you start going after products that are selling you know, and making you you know, at least a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars every single month. Let's say you only have enough money to purchase a course. Like if you're interested in joining my training, what should you do then? Should you, um, you know, just save a bunch of money and then once you have enough money to buy a product, then jump in the course? I think a little different. I think kind of like a college education, right? You get all the education and then after the education, you're ready to hit the ground running. I don't think I've seen anybody who has taken my course or who has just learned about Amazon Private Label and sourced a product within the first month or month and a half. It's very rare because there's, there is a steep learning curve. So with that in mind, I would say if you have enough to purchase a course or training, I would do that. And while you're learning on this learning curve and, and getting rid of a bunch of bad habits that perhaps you have uh, from reading in these different Facebook groups or different YouTube channels, that way, while you're learning, you can be saving up capital. You can be cutting back spending. You can quit you know, drinking so much beer or whatever you're doing. And, and then as you're learning, you're saving money and you can jump right in the game once you have enough knowledge, okay? So hope that answers that question. Now, the next question is how do you add, interact with a supplier once you've vetted them and build on that first order and gain a personal relationship with them? So as, as this person from my student group uh, clearly knows, and I teach this, it's all about relationship building with your suppliers. One thing that's really helped me to, to build great relationships with my suppliers and, and has helped me to get better uh, payment terms and better prices and, and more honesty and trust there is I try to have um, a personable nature in day-to-day -day life. Okay, I'm talking about if, if I go to the store, I'm trying to say hello, how are you to the cashier? I'm not that random weirdo who talks to anybody in the, in the grocery aisles, but um, I try to be show personal interest in others. And I noticed that type of, of interaction transfers over into when I talk to my suppliers. It's just natural to want to get to know them, how's their day, what they do last week. Um, anything, because mo most people, let's be honest, they're, they're focused on themselves. What am I doing this weekend? What do I do tonight? What do I got to get done now? But if you can change that to being interested in others and primarily your suppliers, from day one, you're just going to naturally be like that. You know, be interested. Ask them how it works going. What's their shift usually? How many people at the at the um, factory? How long they've been working there? Do they have any goals there? Um, do they have a family? All these types of things I try to get to know pretty quickly. And then I build on that. And when they tell me something's coming up, like they have the Dragon Boat Festival or something that, when it's done, I ask them, hey, how was Dragon Boat Festival? You got any pictures? Send me a picture. Or, or you're going on Dragon Boat Festival? Send me a picture when you're out there. What do you do? You know? And, and over time, that relationship starts to build. So I highly recommend, you know, in your day-to-day -day life, uh, try to show personal interest in others, and it will correlate and translate into your supplier relationships.
Now the, the last question I'll touch on here is how do you scale from the initial two to three products? To scale from the initial two to three products, I highly recommend trying to see if there's other variations or quantities or a bundle that you can do of your existing products. That is the quickest and easiest way to start expanding and growing your product portfolio. And, and also it's really nice because you're already in, in contact with a supplier, you know their quality is good, you have good communication. Um, it's so simple to just order another product from them. And, and you'll be able to uh, get better prices on everything if you start ordering more from them. So look at your products now, look at your products now, say, can I offer this in a different color, a different size, a different case pack, could I bundle it with something else and have that as a variation onto it and, and start expanding your product portfolio that way. All right, you guys, so I hope this video was informative. Yes, $10 million on Amazon in the past 12 months. What a feat, I'm excited. I remember when I first started this channel and I did $45,000 in sales in one day and it was crazy, it was Cyber Monday. And then I did like $200,000 in sales on a prime day. And then I was trying to do a million dollars in sales in a month and I made that three part uh, video series and I did 1.4 million. And now here it is, June, not one of the busiest times of the year and I'm rolling at 1.1 million on a consistent 30 days and I now hit 10 million. So the future looks bright. If you want to learn from me, if you want to learn from somebody who is in the trenches, who started with one product, grew their business to 10 million last year, who's selling consistently over $1 million every 30 days, look no further. Click the link below in the description. Check out the, the video testimonials. I think there's probably like 20 to 30 over there. And there's sellers who are doing $90,000 a month, $100,000 a month, $1 million dollars a year. And imagine a group of all like-minded people that I make sure that no bad apples are in there, no bad information is in the group, and everyone helping each other out. That is the type of community and type of culture that is really gonna help your business scale. So remember, if you wanna learn how to be a master seller, you're tired of being an average seller, or you just wanna jump into the Amazon business and you're brand new, this course is for you. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the next video.